Robocop was one of our favorite films growing up, so when we got the chance to recreate a scene featuring our favorite robot, we simply had to comply. We already enjoyed making a hyper-violent scene for our Footloose remake. So when the same folks who organized that decided it was Robocop's turn, we started planning one of the craziest projects we'd ever attempted. We were going to build an accurate, full-size replica of the seven-foot-tall villain robot Ed-209, who could walk, shoot, smack engineers in the face, and he would do it all without the help of visual effects. Sure, we hadn't done anything like this before, but how hard could it be? Wrong way. We started testing before we even knew if we'd get the scene we wanted. We didn't care. We wanted to see if we could get Ed 209 moving. That's awesome. <coughs> to make our Ed 209 efficiently and accurately, we used photos from the original full-size movie prop to build a 3D model in the computer, where we could experiment and make mistakes for free. The skeleton was coming along nicely. To make Ed 209's exterior decorations, we took each 3D part and unfolded it to lay flat so it could be printed out, traced onto cardboard, cut, folded, and glued back together. Sort of like a really cheap 3D printer. Hard enough. Huh? Alright, so one problem we've had is when James lifts his foot, the outside of Ed 209's foot has a lot of weight on it and it wants to dip down. So we've added this spring, which helps lift up the outer edge. James is just now trying it. It's so much easier. Yeah, even James is good at this now. We knew we needed a way to make lightweight copies of the shapes we were making. We'd heard of a technique called vacuum forming and decided to give it a try. That's all right. We have to push it down first. <laughs> Try it again. Go. Uh. Well, some of the shapes were too weak and collapsed under the pressure of the vacuum, and you crushed my decorations. Yes, the decorations were crushed. We've got our, uh, cut out the cardboard shapes, and I folded it all together, reinforced it with lots of popsicle sticks and wood, and filled in with car epoxy, like basically body filler, and I'm just sanding out these edges. If we can get the vacuum forming to work, we'll vacuum form this, and that way I only have to make one of these instead of eight, eight of these. This has taken me a few days. We finished foaming up this shape and the foam is expanding and filling in all the little nicks and crannies that we couldn't see and hopefully that'll resist being crushed by the vacuum form. Yeah. Oh yeah. With vacuum forming finally working, we could spend more time giving each shape more detail, knowing that the plastic copies looked great, weighed almost nothing, and worked seamlessly with cardboard when painted. As Ed 209's outsides progressed, so did his insides. Hello. Hi, Dave. Who are you? I'm Ed 209. <laughs> oh, no, 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 I'm Daniel Kenton. I'm uh, wearing Ed 209. So how do you know us? Uh, I know you guys from when I was in high school, and then we've been making movies together ever since. I have been shot. I have been crushed. We had you play a toaster once, right? That's true, I did play a toaster once. That's right, yep. 
Do you guys really like my legs? That's true. We do show your legs a lot. So what kind of research have you done for this role? Uh, I watched Rubble Goblins. Shit. Oh, wow. <laughs> it feels so weird. <laughs> you don't have to go super high. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thoughts? Uh, get yourself a job. <laughs> Good I job. come over here in three months and you're still making robot parts. We might, we might still be. I'm watching Robocop. I'm gonna have to have an intervention. <laughs> How much am I getting paid again? Nothing. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> I'm gonna call my agent right now. I might have a small role Jerry? for you in the beginning. Jerry? All right, explain why I just gave you a really hard high five. Uh, I figured out how to make the guns move just like the guy's arm inside. You can move up and down and the guns stay level. That's the big thing, right? Because when this rotates, that means the guns would rotate like this and stay level with the stick. Yeah, if but they were didn't... level with the stick, they would come down and be uneven like this. So I've rigged another parallelogram in here to keep the guns level. It costs five cents to make this whole thing. <laughs> and it just doesn't matter that it's crap because it just proves that it'll work. Put the gun down, asshole. It's a camera. Put the gun <laughs> down. <laughs> oh my God, I can see him. Oh man, dude, the over the head with Kenny, Muppet Kenny. Muppet Kenny. Kenny's totally hype Muppet Kenny behind his giant head. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, Muppet! 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 This is an object. <laughs> Which way to set, please? Is the set over there? He looks like Audrey, too. <laughs> Feed me! Feed me, Seymour! <laughs> You be careful with it, that took me a day. Sorry. This is what his head will look like, which the performer needs to be able to see out of, so we decided to go with plexiglass. I cut off each strip with a knife. You have to go one, two, and you have to do it a lot, and then you have to snap it. It's really a pain in the ass and <laughs> takes forever. Uh, I'm gonna glue this all together. We'll take the cardboard away. <laughs> that keeps it shape really, really well. James was hired as director of photography on another project. So he started shooting 12 hours each day before coming home to spend another four hours on the robot. Hey, who's that? Oh my God. <laughs> With our deadline fast approaching and James gone most of the day, we went into engineering overdrive the head started to get very front heavy, but there was no time to make him comfortable to wear. He just had to work. When the guns go out, it looks a little silly. Yeah. What? On the day before the shoot, James was busy lighting the giant cardboard set. At home, the mad dash to finish Ed 209 became desperate and terrifying. The shoot was tomorrow, and our robot still didn't have gun barrels or a paint job. We painted Ed 209 in pieces on our tiny balcony in the dark, afraid that our neighbors could complain at any moment about the noise and we'd have to stop. We finished at 4.30 a.m., three hours before our first shoot day. So Dave is our fearless director. James is our fearless DP. They're the brains of this operation. Celette is our makeup, and Rebecca. Mr. Cadilla is sound. There's too many people to thank for the people who made costumes, people who made a Delta City model. Thank you so much, this is insane, and it's gonna be a really slow start. We're starting with our hardest shot, Sans Robot. So what are we doing here? The old man puppeteer, he's on a dolly, and we're walking backwards following him, and then he needs to sit down. Then we pull back, revealing the puppeteer, so we took a chair back off of the chair. Nice. Mounted here, with perspective, it'll look like a chair. <laughs> Very hot. This is 
my favorite part, watching the puppeteers reset. Old man, can you give us a wave? Oh, thank you so much. You're looking handsome. Yeah, that's basically the same exact moment. He's being uh, pushed back and forth between executives one and two. Did I mention I'm on two hours of sleep? And before that, that was uh, three hours of sleep. We had seen Ed 209 at home, but only in pieces. The first time we saw him completely painted and put together was on set. Sure, he was kind of incomplete and uncomfortable to wear, but there he was, our favorite robot come to life right in front of us. Honestly, that was pretty cool. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. People are going to think you just cut and put it through the movie. No. <laughs> we just might. <laughs> It'd be faster. And action. Cut. Cut, cut. Keep rolling, keep rolling, hold. Here we go. We don't need the toes for this part. Go down. With more time, maybe we could have made him stronger, but with a little duct tape and editing, you can get away with a lot. Right, and and Max. Yeah! <laughs> Three, two, one. <laughs> Got in. Okay, you're shooting. Three, two, one. Hoop, hoop, hoop. On the table. So guys, you're great. Thank, Thank you so you much. Know. That's great. That was good. Perfect. Do that. That's what we're doing. Let's do this. Let's do it. Let's do it. Can we do it? Oh. <laughs> Action reversal. Ah! 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 Okay, we're doing it. Let's do it. 42 A and B, take one. Mark. And step in the way. Okay, here we go. Ready? Everyone's speeding. Remember the gun timing? Let me know when you're ready for the light. Okay, and three, two, one, action. Ah! Cut! Nailed it. Playback. It was a crazy shoot, but we were so happy with everything we got, and it was all thanks to our friends who donated their time and worked so hard. So after we sent everyone home, we stuck around with our trusty gaffer Brock Kingsland to get one last shot at 2 a.m. Yeah, I didn't take this one down. I should have. It's okay. Yeah, this is crushed. <laughs> okay. So they've used all your might to be gentle. We were exhausted, brain dead, and Ed kept falling apart. But we got the last shot, and it was totally worth it. Hi, this is future self. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna put cameras on the cart. Almost blacked out. Um, <laughs> that would have been great to get on camera. I got time. Yeah, if I just like. Alright, so here's what we're gonna do. Thank you, Brock. Okay. Let's get Thank Dave you. out of here. So, Dave, did you play Ed 209 this whole time? No, it was Dan Kent. He did a better job than I did. Dan Kent was way better. But we tortured Dan long enough, so I just stepped in for those last few foot shots. After months of design and construction, and only two days of jam-packed shooting, we were finally wrapped. Compared to the shoot, cleaning up the next day was a breeze. Oh, I haven't heard you call yet. Okay. <laughs> Attitude, man. Over Christmas break, we built the miniature elevator with cardboard and little Christmas lights. 
shot that, and finished editing the scene. So here's Ed 209, the full costume as he existed during the shoot. We put him together like this so we can have him hopefully at the lobby of the theater when the premiere and the public screenings happen. Uh, but right now what we're going to do is take him apart and make a couple repairs, and if we have time, maybe add a few things that we didn't get to add for the shoot. State your name and what are you doing here? Hey, uh, I'm Dave Seeger, kind of organized, sent out all the emails for this project. Took the original Robocop, separated all the pieces, and then uh, a bunch of filmmakers each individually shot the scenes, and now they're being brought back together to be screened together. Uh, thanks everybody who made scenes. Uh, there's more screenings on Sunday for anyone else you want to. Quick round of applause for Dave Seeger who put everything together. Going to the premiere with our cast and crew was great. Not just for our scene, but for all of them. Everyone in that theater was there because they love making movies. Thanks to David Seeger and our fellow filmmakers for putting this together and making us laugh. Thanks to our talented friends and family for making our scene possible. It was a joy to step into the unknown with you and try something that might not work. It reminded us how satisfying it can be to go old school, make stuff with your hands, and embrace imperfection. Robocop was one of our favorite films growing up, and now our Robocop remake is one of our favorite memories.